Welcome back. This is module 4 of MLOps ZoomCamp and in this module we will talk about module deployment. And let me quickly recap what we did so far. First we start with the design phase where we gather the requirements and understand if machine learning is the right solution for our problem. Then we spend some time training our model. And here as a part of train we talked about experiment tracking, like how we can capture all the metrics from our experiments. And we also talked about productionizing our notebook, taking our notebook and turning this into a machine learning pipeline. The output of this step of training pipeline is a model. And this is something we will see how to deploy in this model. In this model, we'll talk about the operate phase, where we take the model and we deploy it. When it comes to model deployment, there are multiple options. First, we need to ask ourselves if we need to have predictions immediately or it can wait a little bit for an hour, for a day, for a week. And if we can wait a little bit, then we go with the batch mode of deployment. Also sometimes called batch deployment, offline deployment. So here, the model is not up and running all the time. We just apply our model to new data regularly. The other option is when we need the model up and running all the time. We need predictions as soon as possible. And I would refer to this mode of deployment as online. So here the model is up and running all the time. It's always available. And in turn, in online deployment, there are multiple variants as well. So the first one is a web service. When we deploy our model as a web service. And the other is streaming. So in case of a web service, the model is available through a web service. We can send HTTP requests. We get back the predictions from this service. And streaming is when there is a stream of events. Model service is listening for events on the stream and react to this. So now we will take a closer look at each of them. So I will start with batch mode and then we'll talk about web service and streaming. So as I said, patch mode is when we need to apply model regularly. For example, every 10 minutes, every half an hour, every hour, every six hours, every day, every week, every month, etc. So at regular intervals. And usually the way it looks like is we have some sort of uh, database with all our data. And then we have a scoring job, a job that has the model, pulls some data from the database and applies the model to this data. We can call it prediction job, we can just call it a job, it doesn't matter. Like the, the point is this thing has a model inside. It pulls some data from the database. Say if this thing is running daily, then it gets all the data from yesterday. If it's running hourly, it gets all the data from the previous hour and so on. Right? So we run this and we check the data from the previous interval and then we apply the model to everything that we get from the database. And we write the result to some other place, say another database with predictions. And then something can read from this database and react on these predictions. So could be, for example, a report. So it pulls the data from the predictions and then shows, okay, these are the predictions, how they look like, or something else. We, we use batch mode quite often. For example, quite often we use it for marketing related tasks. So let's think of our taxi example. We have a user, right? And then the user has an app and then they talk to this app to get taxi. But that's not the only app that you can use for hiring a taxi, right? There could be a competitor, let's say Uber. And the user might think, okay, what if I go to Uber? And at some point they can decide to go to Uber and stop using our app, right? And this is called churn. People decide to stop using services of one company, of our company, and go to a competitor. This is quite a common task in uh, marketing. And here we want to identify users who are about to churn and then give them some incentive. Typically, these kind of models are deployed in batch mode because you don't need to know that the user is about to churn immediately when they made this decision to churn. You would run this thing, for example, every day or every week. For this particular case, it can be a daily job. So you get some data with all the users from yesterday. You look at their activity and then you put this into your churn job and then you get 
predictions. And then there is another job, let's say marketing job, or I don't know, reward job or whatever, that pulls these predictions. It says for these users, this job predicted that they are about to churn, so let's send them pushes. So this is something that doesn't need to be up and running all the time. It's fine if we just run it daily and then do something with the results. Then another way of deployment is a web service. Let's talk a bit about that. I think this is a pretty common way of deploying models. So you have a web service that contains the model. Our example, our running example of predicting the duration of a trip is quite a good example of a service that should be deployed as a web service. So I'll call it rate duration service. Let me move it a little bit. So typically we have a user with an app. The app talks to the backend of the app. And then the backend might talk to the right duration service and send some information about the user, like user ID, pick up location, drop off location, so on. Other features, time of the day, etc. And then this right duration service would predict that duration is 30 minutes, right? And then this information is passed to the user. This model needs to be up and running all the time because user needs to know the duration immediately when they are about to hire a taxi. So they probably do not want to hire a taxi until they know how long it will take and how much it will cost. And then this is exactly why we need this model. So we will get some prediction from uh, the service and then user will see this and they will make a decision whether to hire a taxi or not. This is a very good example of when we need to deploy a model as a web service because the app needs this decision immediately. For this decision, we cannot wait for five minutes. We need this immediately on the screen where the user is requesting a taxi. And this is a little bit different from streaming. So in streaming settings, we have producers and consumers. This is uh, something that produces events and uh, we have consumers. Just call it them C1, C2, C3. These are the consumers. So producer, pushes some events to an event stream and then consumers would read from this stream and react to these events and then do something with this. So here in the web service case, we have one-to-one -one relationship sort of, client-server uh, relationship. So when the client, in this case, the client uh, would be backend, when the client sends a request, they initialize a connection between the backend service and the rate duration prediction service. This connection is kept alive while the duration service is processing the request and then until it replies with the response. So there is a connection between them that uh, stays alive all the time while write duration is processing the request. In case of streaming, it's a little bit different. It's more like one too many relationship or maybe many to many. There could be multiple producers. And uh, well, let's talk about like when there is one producer. So if we talk about taxis, could be the case that a user with an app talks to our backend and they decide to hire a taxi. They press this button, get a taxi, order a taxi, and what actually happens, this backend becomes a producer. It can send an event right started. And this event will contain all the information about the ride, like the user ID, pickup location, drop off location, and then multiple services, multiple consumers consume from this stream and they see, okay, there is an event, we can run something for these events. One service could be tip prediction. So we can run a model that predicts if a customer will leave a tip or not. And if they will, maybe they will send some sort of a push notification asking for a tip, something like this. Another consumer might have a more accurate model for predicting duration. That is a more accurate version. Let's say in the backend, here we have a service uh, that we deploy as a web service with our duration prediction. But this is a simple model that gives an OK estimate and then the user agrees and the model says it's 30 minutes, but then we run a more accurate duration prediction model when the ride already started. And then we can update this saying actually, you know what, instead of 30 minutes, it will take 20. And there can be multiple consumers, all of them consume from the event stream and all of them are independent. And here the key difference between streaming and web service is um, backend or the producer just sends an event and then it doesn't really care 
what happens with this? There is no connection between the producer and consumer, at least no explicit connection between them. So there is an implicit connection that we know that there will be some services that will process this, but the, this connection is implicit. So we know that something is reading from this event stream and something is reacting to this, but we don't know who, we don't know how many. And as far as backend is concerned, it doesn't care. It just pushes an event and then something processes these events. A good use case for the streaming architecture is a content moderation thing. So even though in this course we talk mostly about this use case of taxi, but I think this content moderation example is a very good example to talk about when we talk about streaming. So in this case, uh, we can talk about, let's say, YouTube. On YouTube, users can upload videos. So let's say this is a video that a user uploads. So the video goes to YouTube and then there is an event, for example, video upload. I'm making this up, I don't know how it works on YouTube. This is just an example. This is how I would implement the moderation, a content moderation system, right? So then there could be consumers. Then the first consumer maybe is looking at copyright violations. The other consumer might be looking at not safe for work content, like pornography, explicit nudity, and so on. It can be another consumer that maybe looks at violence or something like this, like violence, hate speech, and so on. So we have a bunch of consumers like this. All of them push their decisions, their predictions to the prediction stream. This is one stream with events coming from the backend, and this would be another stream with predictions from these services. And then there could be some decision service or moderation service that says, okay, we see that this copyright violation thinks that this video violates a copyright. This video should be removed. This decision service sees that one of the consumers thinks that the video should be removed, and then probably it also explains why, and then it goes ahead and removes the video. So here we do not need to wait immediately for all of these things to work. We just send them to a stream and then we have a bunch of services. Each of them is responsible for its own thing. And let's say if we need to add a new service, we just create another consumer. We connect it to the same stream and then we can scale such a system to infinitely many different models that all see at the piece of content video and see if it should stay on the platform or not. Another use case for streaming could be recommendation system. So let's say a video is published and then the, there is an event that video is published and then there is maybe a component that says a new video who I should notify about, it, who will be interested in this content. And then perhaps it adds this video to some recommender feeds. Okay, I think this is enough information for now. So what I want to do next is I want to talk about all this batch web service and streaming separately. So here we just had an overview of typical use cases. Now I want to talk about each of them individually and show how to deploy a model in all of these modes, in the batch mode, in the web service mode and streaming mode. And then eventually at the end of the course, we'll talk about pros and cons of each. And we will also talk about making a decision which when to use which one. So that's all from this video from me for now and uh, see you soon.